when Sarah went to visit her friend at college. She liked the campus and she liked the other students. But there was, there was one, one thing she thought she might have a hard time getting used to. A ghost down the hall. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a senior in high school in Helena, Alabama. One of my best friends from high school started at the University of Montevallo this year. When I went there, I expected to hear about the school, basically, and about the campus life and living in dorms and such. But what I found out was something I did not expect at all. I found out the dorm I was staying in was haunted. My mom dropped me off that day at Crystal's dorm, which is the main hall. Be careful. The building was huge, and it looks like a haunted house. It's very creepy. Hi, girl. How are you doing? She got to tell me about um, a ghost. Condi Cunningham. Named Condi Cunningham that haunts one of our campus. In 1908, um, she and her roommate were cooking some fudge in their room late one night, which was forbidden by the house mother. The house mother gave them the word that they had to, 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 to turn out the lights and go to bed. They probably had a chafing dish uh, at the time. It was fueled by alcohol. So they were hurrying in their scuffle. They knocked a bottle of alcohol over. Sound caught fire. And it caught on fire and started burning quite a bit. She then ran screaming through the halls and burned to death. That's natural instinct, is when your clothes get on fire to run. Uh, and all running does is fan the flames. So the last thing you want to do is run. As we were walking up to her room, she began to tell me about some weird things that had happened to her while she's been living here. My alarm clock went off, and I woke up. I looked, and I saw my door was open. You know, I didn't, I didn't see the doorknob twist or anything. When the door was like halfway open, I realized that there was nobody on either side of it. We can be sitting on our bed, and nobody's around, and all of a sudden, our computer will just come on. It wasn't just Crystal's room, but the whole dorm was haunted by a ghost named Condi. I heard just footsteps, just somebody just walking out hard. And it's not like it was just soft footsteps, it was hard footsteps, like somebody was running or something. We're getting ready to go out, and I was, I believe I was in the bathroom part, doing my makeup and getting ready. And Melissa said, uh, come here and look at this. I came out and I said, what are you talking about? We waited for a second and the rug sort of ruffled. It, it waved. As if maybe like air had come under it, but the air was off. The air was off. Night. There was no way the air could have gotten Doors under it. were shut, windows were shut. No way a draft, it could have been a draft, but you kind of had this cold, shuddery feeling run through you. When I went into the shower, I was not thinking about ghosts or spirits or anything of that matter. It was a normal day. Well, while I was in there, I heard the heavy bathroom door come open. And then I heard some footsteps go all the way from the bathroom door to the end of the bathroom where there's a stall. I heard the bathroom stall door close, and then I heard a terrible, horrible scream. It sounded like somebody had been surprised and then hurt. It was an agonized, terrified scream. And so I walked to the last stall, and I opened the door and saw that I was completely alone. When I heard the scream, it just echoed. I mean, it was very, very loud, and there was no way that it could have been just somebody's radio or anything, because in the summer, there's nobody here. And I was completely alone in that bed. People weren't just hearing Connie, they were seeing her. Something just woke me up. And there was this girl in a white nightgown. I thought it was my roommate, because my glasses were on the nightstand, so I couldn't really see, and I kept screaming my roommate's name. When I reached over on my nightstand to get my glasses, my roommate was in her bed. And so I started screaming my roommate's name even louder. And right as she sat up and opened her eyes, she caught a brief glimpse of Condi, and she disappeared right before her eyes. I was so scared of that room that I moved out, thinking that if I moved, I wouldn't have to worry about her coming back to visit us again. We moved from the second floor to the third floor. I opened my eyes to look at the clock, and she was in front of me, eye level with me on the top bunk, like she was floating. As I was looking at her, she backed up away from me and started motioning for me to come there. She just took her finger and did like this. 
The second time, I was scared, but it wasn't as big of a surprise to me just because I knew that she roamed the hall. I thought I'd heard just about enough, and then they told me about the door. The story goes that shortly after Condi's death, um, a figure appeared on her door of a face, uh, and that face was a girl with her hair on fire screaming. See, the eyes were like, they were really wide, and all around the face, there are flames, like, sticking up, like, her hair is on fire, and she's like... The door has been changed at least three times. Her face would always reappear into the wooden doors. Finally, a few years ago, we removed the door and put it in an attic storage area. And it's been there ever since. I, I managed to take my camera with me, luckily, because I wanted to see if anything was going to happen. When we were at the bottom of the steps, I, I didn't know what to expect. I'm shaking. I got these butterflies in my stomach like something was going to happen or I was about to see something that was just really scary. It was like she was there. I mean, she was in the door. I, I think Condi was probably in there watching over us. I don't think Condi's here to scare anybody off. She's sort of trapped here. I mean, she didn't get to fulfill all her teenage years, so she wants to see how everybody else is fulfilling theirs. As Sarah continued her search for the right college, she asked, asked herself, herself one, one question. question. Could she live with someone who wasn't living? It would be very weird just living with somebody that's on the other side, kind of a supernatural being. I mean, you can't just refer to her as a ghost like it's nothing, because it's definitely something. She's scared because you don't exactly know what to expect, and you don't really know what's causing it all. She stays in this building. She lives in this building. So I think that if it's not just her trying to keep Maine safe, but it's her having an unfinished business and her spirit just cannot get out of the building. Being in the presence of something supernatural and knowing that you're in the presence of something completely unexplainable and phenomenal is something that you never forget. You get to live with someone that not living, <laughs> kind of like another roommate. These are the stories of real people from across the country who have had experiences with the unknown. If you have a story to tell, visit our website at realscarystories.com or write to us at Highland Entertainment, PO Box 2036, Old Chelsea Station, New York, New York, 10113. Tell us your real scary story. Someone's reaching out and grabbing you. Oh my god. Are real. <laughs> they are just real scary stories. <laughs> They're scary stories that are real. Oh god. The Real Scary Stories Marathon continues with another episode next, part of the 13 Nights of Halloween on ABC Family. Are you scared? Oh!